So V2V stands for vehicle to vehicle communications and it's something that um, automakers and suppliers and the government have been working on for uh, more than 10 years now. Uh, essentially what it is, it's a, it's a mechanism that allows cars and other devices to talk to each other in real time and pass messages back and forth about what they're doing. Uh, it's based on Wi-Fi technology. Uh, the FCC set aside some uh, spectrum uh, back in the late 90s at 5.9 gigahertz that's dedicated for this, uh, they call it DSRC, dedicated short range communications. And uh, there's been a, an ongoing test program, pilot program here in Ann Arbor, Michigan for the last three years with about 3000 vehicles uh, that they're using to test uh, the the protocols, the messaging protocols, and the security and everything for uh, for what more broadly is known as V to X or vehicle to external. So it can be vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to pedestrian, uh, vehicle to infrastructure. So you can have cars talking to lights and being warned when the lights are about to change, uh, things like that. So it, it's a, it's a mechanism to provide real time communications between um, anything that's on the road. So when you're taking the case of uh, the autonomous, you know, Google's autonomous car versus the bus, um, how, how could that scenario have been different if V2V was implemented? Well, um, right now, the way the Google vehicles are set up, uh, they're relying, at least to the best, to, as far as we know, they're relying entirely on the sensors that are on the vehicle, that the LiDAR sensors and radar sensors and cameras on the vehicle that are looking around to see what's going on around the vehicle to look for pedestrians, look for other vehicles, and make adjustments based on what they're doing. Uh, with If you added V to V into that mix, what that would allow you to do, what that would allow the, the vehicle control system to do is um, be a little more preemptive and have a little bit more indication before the sensors even pick up what's going on, uh, what's what might be about to happen. What got me thinking about this particular uh, uh, story uh, was I was listening to Twig the other day and uh, Kevin Marks and, and Leo and um, uh, I forget who else was on Matthew there. Ingram. Uh, Matthew, yeah, uh, Matthew Ingram was were on there, and I think Kevin was talking about um, you know with humans when when you come to a four way stop, you come to an intersection, you can humans can uh, can uh, detect some intent of what other drivers are going to do through nonverbal communications. I mean, you can signal each other, you know, send hand signals to each other, you know, oh, you go first or you know whatever, um, and the with just the sensors on the vehicle, you don't necessarily have that ability to detect intent of what's going to happen. So in a scenario like this, like what happened with uh, the Google self-driving car and the bus, uh, if there was V2V -V communications, the, the self-driving car could have been aware that the bus driver had not lifted his foot off the gas pedal mm -hmm. and was continuing to, to move and, and didn't have any intent to stop. Uh, and then the, the self-driving car could have used that signal and said, and you know, stopped itself before it ran into the bus. Well, I've heard of like a, in the future, an imagined future where like children and, you know, elderly will wear sensors. So like a car would, you know, the LIDAR would be able to detect, okay, that's a small child that might run out into the street at any time. And so I'll behave accordingly. Have you, do you think that's something that we're, are we all going to have sensors as well as pedestrians? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, we already carry those sensors, you know, in the form of our, our, our smartphones. You know, th these smartphones all have uh, Wi-Fi chips in them. And as I mentioned, uh, VDX communications is based on Wi-Fi technology. It's just it's on a, on a dedicated frequency. And uh, companies like Qualcomm are, have been working for some time on using, um, using smartphones to be part of the, the VDX ecosystem. And a couple of years ago at the ITS World Congress here in Detroit, uh, they were Qualcomm was demonstrating vehicle to pedestrian communications and it's just a matter of retuning the uh, the Wi-Fi radio and the phone uh, to act as a beacon uh, to cars so that, uh, the vehicles will know when somebody's about to step out into the road and Honda did a big demonstration here uh, with you, you, you can put you know if you have your phone you know for bicyclists that are riding with their phone motorcyclists pedestrians uh, it, it makes the vehicles that are driving that are driving autonomously or even with hum still with human drivers, uh, it provides beacons uh, to make the drivers more aware so you can get, give the driver an alert 
that somebody's about to step out into the road or there's a cyclist that you might not see uh, just up around the corner. Uh, so it, it's, it's, some, it's something that's really already out there. And basically what Qualcomm and other companies have been working on is just the power management to make sure we don't drain the battery too quickly. Sam, I had one question. What are they doing in terms of securing that network communication between the uh, the devices, between the cars, and between the uh, the cell phones and the cars? That's part of what uh, has been going on in the the pilot program. It's the uh, safe they call it the uh, safety pilot model deployment here in Ann Arbor, uh, where they're testing the security and. Basically, all of the devices uh, that are part of this ecosystem, so vehicles, uh, infrastructure, the cars, they would all have uh, certificates. So it's a certificate-based security, kind of like SSL, uh, and the certificates would expire over time and, and gradually be replenished as, as needed uh, to authenticate that any device that's sending the message uh, is a legitimate device that's part of this network. So uh, the intent is to make sure that, uh, that you know, you don't have somebody sitting on the side of the road blasting messages, blasting bogus messages out to the cars uh, that, you know, and, and providing, you know, bogus alerts to, to drivers. Instead, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the system would say, you would see that, you know, there's no, uh, it's not properly authenticated with a certificate and it would just ignore those messages. I can just see the headline now, Bad Certificate Authority Found. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, that obviously is a risk, uh, but, you know, that's, that's why they've been doing, running, that's part of why they've been running this test program here sure. for the last three and a half years. I'm still, I'm still a huge fan because I know I'm not that good of a driver and I'm actually paying attention most of the time. So uh, I, I'm a big fan of self-driving cars. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say I'm surprised, like... I'm surprised that V2V, -V, as as you're describing, wasn't kind hasn't kind of been part of just how autonomous vehicles were going to work all along. Like you would think that if if they're all connected and they're all you know working with computers, kind of making all the decisions in the back end, then it makes sense that they would all be connected uh, to each other. Now GM is launching a V2V -V capable uh, Cadillac next year. Uh, no, this year, actually. Or is it this, this year? year? Later this year, sorry. Yeah. Uh, first automaker to do that. What does this mean for someone buying that car at this point? Well, initially, the, the Cadillacs will be the only ones on the road with this capability. Uh, but other manufacturers uh, have indicated their intention to also start launching uh, V2V communications in the next couple of years. Uh, and I think, you know, probably the my the forecast that we uh, produced last year uh, was that by the mid-2020s, by about 2025, most new vehicles will come equipped with uh, V2X capability. Um, initially, it'll just be vehicle to vehicle, just uh, sending basic safety messages back and forth. So, for example, uh, you know, if a car going down the road hits a patch of ice, activates the ABS or the traction control, it'll blast out a message saying, hey, there's slippery road here. So other vehicles in the area can get warned before they might hit a patch of black ice. Um, or similarly, if somebody stomps on the brakes, you know, emergency braking, same sort of thing, they'll send out a message. And uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in uh, August of 2014 put out a notice of proposed rulemaking uh, to mandate uh, V2V uh, in all new cars. And uh, sometime in the next month or so, uh, we should be hitting the next stage of that where they'll, they'll be putting out what their proposal for the final rule and probably sometime around 2019 or 2020 um, we'll probably here in the U.S. at least have uh, a mandate that new vehicles have to be equipped with V2V communications. Uh, and then as, as I mentioned you know, with smartphones um, because smartphones going forward will we'll probably have this DSRC capability, the V2V um, uh, enabled uh, probably starting somewhere around 2017, 2018. Um, you know, for cars that are already on the road, uh, people will probably be, will hopefully be able to use their phones uh, to get those messages. And, and you know, if your phone is paired to your to your infotainment system, it could flash up a message or give you an alert when one of these V2V messages comes in.